Good Tuesday morning, Mount Olive family, friends, everybody joining us for a devotion today. Hope you're having a great day and uh, hope you um, got to catch uh, the first part, the first devotion, uh, Monday's devotion with Brother Andrew Short. Uh, wonderful, wonderful de- devotion that he done. Appreciate Brother Andrew. It's uh, blessing for our church. Let him know how much you appreciate and thank thankful for him when you see him. Uh, although I was a little disappointed we didn't get any hats or, um, you know, any wigs, anything. He, he was a little bit, he was a little bit normal Monday. Normal's not, normal's not, uh, not common for Andrew, is it? Um, it's always good to have fun. I love to pick on my brothers in Christ too. Um, so today we're going to talk about loved and being loved. Um, do you know how much you are loved? Um, and I'm not talking about by me, even though I love each and every one of you. Uh, I'm not talking about by our pastor, even though he loves each and every one of you. But do you think about how much you are loved by your Savior? Do you think about how much you are loved by Christ? Maybe you're watching today and you're not saved. Uh, if you're not, I want you to just hang with us here for a few minutes and, um, take in God's word here. <laughs> so we're going to look into Romans. That's where we're at this week. We're going to go to verse uh, Romans chapter five here in a minute. I'm going to go through a couple different verses, but you ever talked, thought about what it's like to show love? What, what does it mean to you when you're showing love to someone? And, you know, automatically I, you know, I just go ahead and think about my family first and foremost. And I, I think about, I think about my wife and my children uh, and how much I love them and, what what I would do for them and uh, think about my parents, uh, how much I love them and uh, all my extended family, my in-laws. And um, I think about people I work with, uh, my close friends, my church family. Uh, but, you know, when you really, really love someone and you're showing love, what does that mean when you, you know, what's the ultimate thing that would show love? You know, I, I you know, and, and if you have children, you know this and, I've tried to tell my my daughters this. You'll understand one day when you have your own kids, and you know that's a that's a common saying. I used to think when mom and dad would tell me that, I would think, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, but you know, when you really get down to that, uh, you know, I love my kids enough that I, I prepare for them. You know, when, when they were younger, I try to uh, keep them safe and do all these things. Uh, try to offer them a future. Um, to help what I can to offer that future. But do you ever get to the point where you think about, you know, the ultimate thing is showing love and saying, Hey, I, I give my life for them. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so that's what I want you to kind of keep in mind. And what about this verse for the Christian today? God could never use me after what I've done. Uh, the mistakes that you've made. Well, guess what? You're just like all the rest of us. You're just like the ministers. You're just like the deacons. You're just like the Sunday school teachers, the choir leaders, uh, whatever it may be that's all had mistakes in our lives and in our past. And I went through that. I went through of saying God could never use me after what I've done. It was actually something that, uh, that the devil used to keep me away from God for a long time. When I felt like God was dealing with my heart, uh, I would say, God can never forgive me for everything that I've done. So I want to share a verse with you, uh, today that I hope will sum that up. I hope that'll sum that up for you in, in, in just one verse. But I want to give you these two verses leading up to it. Romans 5, 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Um, verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. For somebody that's that's doing well, for somebody that's um, you know, that's that's not a just an evil person, but but the righteous man. It says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure, or perhaps, that means perhaps, yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die, to even give their life for someone that was good. You know, that's that would be a hard choice to make. So let's look at Romans 5, 8, one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. And I wanted to highlight a little bit here, and I wanted to highlight the word commendeth, because that means to demonstrate or to show his love for us. But the whole I would have had to highlight the whole verse. It's just that that verse just... Uh, it really covers me up. It, 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 uh, wow. That's the only thing you can say. Wow. What love does God have for us? So let's look at this. 
Romans 5, 8 says, but God commendeth or he demonstrates or he shows us his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, before we were righteous, before we put on the coat of righteousness, before our sins were cast as far as the east to the west, before our sins were cast into the sea of, of, of forgetfulness, before all that happened. Let's read again before we read the last part. But God commendeth, or God showeth, or God demonstrates his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, while we were in that state, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. That is something to shout about, to be to be thankful for today, that Christ would die for us. When he looked, you know, when he prayed in the garden over 2,000 years ago, and he was in that garden, and he prayed, and 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 drops of sweat as their blood as if it was sweat was dropping off his head. And he was just so overwhelmed about what he was about to take on. And you look when he was on that cross and it says that God turned away and he looked away from him. And you think about that heaviness that was on him. I'm thankful that when he was in that garden, he looked down the road and he seen Jody Collins 2000 years later and what my life was going to be like and how many times I would turn him away and how many times I would make mistakes and how many times I would fail him. And he'd done that for each and every one of you, just the same as he did with me. But yet he said, I love them. I'm going to the cross. I love them. I'm going to the cross. It's God's will. And that's how much he loved us that he would send his son to die. And if you think about that, a lot of times, you know, I, I read this in a commentary one time and I thought it was a great, excellent point. But if you think about that, you think about, wow, what a benefit that is. What a benefit it was for God to do that for us. And in all actuality, it wasn't a benefit. It, was, it wasn't a benefit as it was God taking our place. He took our place. He took what was right, rightfully coming to us. He And he took that and he put it upon himself. No greater demonstration of love will you ever find than that act that Christ performed that day, than what God allowed for his son to do. That should put, that should put some glory bumps on you today. I hope you have a great day. I hope this verse will uplift you today. Think, go through this day and think about how much God loves you. Find someone else today and you let them know how much God loves them. You tell them that no matter what they've done, what their past was like, what they've been through, the mistakes, the failures, all that, God can still use them. God still loves them and God still wants them because even while they were, the yet, were still yet a sinner, Christ died for them. I love you guys and I hope you have a great day.